to transplant several of these oaks, a few of these oaks, you can see they've kind of got different leaves. So they're different kinds. I don't know what they are. I collected uh, the acorns down in Johnstown Castle. So there's a whole series of different oak trees. So my mixture here is our own soil uh, mixed with um, a nice enriched compost that I bought in, one of the seaweed ones, so that it's kind of fed through the year. So I have these tall pots that I've been saving over the years, either from friends or my own purchases of things like um, uh, clematis or other small trees and things like that, more decorative trees. Anyway, I put in about that much in the bottom. Then what I'm gonna do is roll this bucket. I'm gonna take this bucket off. Oh dear, there, okay. What I mean by rolling this bucket is literally just loosening this, the soil that these trees are in. This bucket, by the way, has holes in the bottom, you can see, so it's not a bucket to contain water or anything. So I might lift up these leaves. And you can see some of these look like cherries, but that's an oak. And before they get too mature, I want to pull them out. So that fella, you can see there's the long root. There it is. And I'm going to put this sideways in here for the moment. Grab this one. Make a space for the tap root to go down. There's the space. Put the tap root down in there. Rest that there a little bit. Move that there. Now fill the rest of that up. Now you want to keep it at the same depth that it was there. And then I firm it around and I give a good bit of space between the top so that when I'm watering it, it can get a good soak if it's really dry. So that's that first oak tree transplanted into that pot there. I'm gonna give this one, this is a big one. I'm gonna give this this bigger pot, but I'm gonna do this with two hands because it's that much bigger. Look at the different kinds. That's a long, narrow leaf. These were all acorns that I collected last autumn. So none of these are all not even a year old. Can you please not walk all over my primroses, my primulas? Come on, get down. Get down, my baby primulas. Anyway, okay, I'm going to work on these. But it looks like I have one two, three, at least different kinds of oak trees, maybe more, I don't know. Because I found, find it easiest to just to lay the acorns in the bucket and cover them in soil and leave them over the winter and come what may in the spring. And it seems like I've got a good crop in there and a good crop in there. So hopefully there's like three or four different kinds of oaks. Looks like some cherry trees as well. So there we go. That's what I'm doing this morning. I'm digging out another, um, this little oak here and planting it. This came up. So I'm gonna plant it. Hopefully it'll keep go rowing. I'll plant it in here. Um, and hopefully it will uh, turn into an oak tree. have to bury it's uh that's very wants to be covered there we go so hopefully that's another tree will come out of there i don't want to firm that down too much because i don't want to damage the tender baby shoes of the tree so that'll go there to the side 
So I'm going to keep going. Now, I've potted up. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <coughs> Excuse me. Eleven oaks. And I now put them in here to soak up water. This is my soak up water bath. So all the oak trees will get a good soaking of water all around their roots. I like them getting it, getting the water from the top and the bottom, but also to have a really good soak when they're such babies. So here's these two. So there's those. And there's this last one here that is the tiny invisible one. And then the bucket, I put the cherries back in the bucket. So there we go. Now I'll get a watering can and water all of them in there. So they're getting it from the top and the bottom so that the soil really gets close to the roots. And it does look like I have a few different kinds there, which is kind of fun. That's the point, getting as many different oaks as possible. Hold my little watering can and just do a little bit to settle the soil down in them. Give them a really good soak. So the roots and the soil meet and soak in together. So I'll leave these to soak for um, half hour or so, so that the soil is well and truly saturated and surrounding all the roots. Because this is the important move when they're separated from each other. My assistant, diligent assistant, 26 oak trees all together out of the two yellow buckets. So they're all different sizes and stages of growth from acorns collected last year. The cherries that were interspersed with them, I've all planted in the one bucket. Under here, out of the sun, direct sunlight, are the tiny, tiny, squidgy, itchy baby ones because I don't want them to get sunburnt. So all the rest of them are used to being in a bit of the sun. These are some of my baby apple trees that are coming too. Hopefully there will be Albemarle Pippin, but I won't know until they produce fruit. It looks like my two experimental grafts are not working, which is kind of sad. But these are the horse chestnuts, again, that I collected last year. So these are not even a year old, and they're looking really good. These are the pineapple lilies that I sowed. They are babies, and they're about three, four years old. So this is my propagation station. And here are, these are the hydrangea cuttings. A lot of them I'm potting on, or I've already potted them on last year, but they need to be potted on again. There's my sleeping assistant. I won't step on you, I promise. And over here, these are the hydrangeas that I've potted on. Here's the two oak trees that I potted on earlier, more hydrangeas. I've got a, some of the horse chestnuts I've got to pot on. So there's oak trees, horse chestnuts, a rowan, horse chestnuts, hydrangeas, horse chestnuts. And you can see there's a different kind of horse chestnut. You see the pink in the leaf. I don't know what's the difference, um, but there's different kinds here. You can see there isn't the pink. So I don't know, but they're just different kinds of horse chestnuts. This is a holly that's not doing very well. I was digging a flower bed and it was in there and I'm hoping it's in the shade and I'm hoping it'll survive, but I'm not hopeful. Anyway, there's my tree growing. And oh, here are some spindle, some ash tree, uh, all different kinds of bits and bobs that uh, I'm growing, cuttings and from seed. These are cuttings, they're doing really well. 
I've got to pop them on actually. That's a cutting. These are all cuttings and things grown from seed. So busy, busy, busy. Always busy, always going. Isn't that right? We should go in for lunch, shouldn't we? We ready for lunch, everybody? Hmm? And this, my water fountain, going beautifully. These are cuttings that would be two years old, doing really, really well. How are you? Should we go inside and have lunch? Yes. This is looking gorgeous. Look at the blue of that tul uh, tulip. That's not a tulip, it's a hyacinth. Anyway, these are a salvia that uh, I'm told butterflies and bees love. We'll see if they do. Anyway, I thought it looked really beautiful. It's duskiness against this, the blue silver of that. And I think that looks lovely. So we'll see, won't we? What you doing up there? What you doing up there? What you doing up there? Yes, yes. Okay, lunchtime. I just realized I was a complete numpty. This is an iris. It's not a hydrangea. It's not a fuchsia. It's not a bobbinopper. It's not a whatever. It's an iris. God, my brain is so fried. Anyway, I think they look beautiful with the blue of the um, geums. And look, this uh, columbine is a beautiful blue as well. So the blues kind of go well together with that orange of that geum. So here we go. Irises, irises, irises. They're all saying, wait, we thought we were going to lunch. Okay, we're gonna go now. We're going to lunch. Come on, out of pups. Come on. Yes. 